Okay, so the last big example I want to work through on the basics of event systems, um, or a couple of examples rather, is more about managing state. Managing state. So if you work with these, you'll know that the, the confusion comes from this communication we've talked about. And, and when I say communication, if you think complicated functions, it's not. It's just setting variables usually. Um, if you learn operating systems, there are some signaling strategies we could use, but typically it's setting or managing a, a, a few variables. So event handlers then, if we don't want to do all the work in the event handler itself, then um, they just basically manage of shared variables and then the main function checks those variables and be, uh, changes how it acts accordingly. So event handlers manage shared variables uh, to communicate. or modify main program. Sounds simple, but again, it's the kind of thing that you get um, easily confused with. I'm gonna demo f um, three programs. We're gonna work on, um, yeah, we're gonna work on some demos here. So here we go. So here's um, number four. And we've seen this before. I'm gonna run uh, this program. It's just this random thing. But what I want to do now is if I double click on it, I want it to disappear. I want it to stop drawing. So we have the event code to check if we've double clicked or not. So draw, and then we have this mouse press code that we've already seen this. Last time we just print line, first click, second click, double click. Now what I've done is I have this variable, it's called double click, and it's assumed as a false. I do my logic, and if it's true um, here, I set double click to true, so I just set a variable internally and say, okay, I got a double click. Down here, if I have a double click, what happens here is I check, we've seen this before, I check whether I clicked inside that rectangle. If it did, I set this global variable called hit. I set it to true. I say, hey, I've hit it. Okay, I'm done. So the job of the event handler is simply to check for double click and then check if I've hit. So it just does a state check. And then up here, in my draw function, it still stays simple, but now I, I manage my global state. I don't manage polling or checking for inputs. That's already taken care of. I just go, okay, I'm gonna draw my, I'm gonna move and draw my shape if it's not hit. If it was hit, I'm gonna stop drawing. And you could imagine if it's hit, you could spawn a new one or give a score, um, but you're, it's really nice because now the job isn't to manage the input, the double click, the processing, all that, that nuance, that happens off in the event handler. We just manage state now. So we have this global variable called hit that's used to communicate to the program that a hit has been made. So even though, it, you know, when I say communicate, we think concurrency, things are happening at the same time, it's not. We still have our event queue, right? But when you're coding up, you can separate your problem. Figuring out the hit, if I got it, I set the variable. Over here in draw, I go, I can manage it. I can say, okay, I don't have a hit, I draw. If I get a hit, um, I don't know, double the size of it. That's what we can do. Let's figure that. So else, I have a hit. Let's try something like that. Width um, times, how about divide equal to half the width, height half equal to. So it's harder. In that case, I'm going to make it bigger to start with. Uh, let's try 180 and 70. So what I've done is, Okay, if it's if I get a hit, I half the size and say, okay, I've resolved the hit. There's no more hit. So draw again. So when I double click, I get a hit. I set the global variable. I'm done. The, the main loop that's running all the time. Are you hit yet? Are you hit yet? Are you hit yet? It's still it's kind of like pulling the state because it's drawing, but it'll watch that state and depending how that changes, it'll act appropriately. So check this out. Okay big now. So the hit is not click, remember it's a double click. So I can double click, I'm missing, I'm missing. And as soon as I double click it, it should go to half size. Come on. I'm not fast enough. There we go. That was hard. <laughs> so I double click, I resolve the hit, it set the global variable. My draw loop just manages the global variable. I gotta get you good. Ah. Oh, I need to make that double click time slower. I got him again. Cool, it's a video game, now it's impossible. 
So that's, that's what we mean by communication and state management. We have these globals. Well, in a real big program, it wouldn't be a global. It would be something in your object. It would be a shared variable somewhere, or you can use getters and setters, that kind of thing, but some way to signal. In your processing program, we're just using globals because there's no object oriented here. It's not the way we're using it, um, at least in these demos. Cool. So this is how you can do it. This is a simple example. I want to work through another example. This is drag and drop. So drag and drop, as you know, is, this, this, um, I was going to run it to show you, but maybe we'll go through the code first. What I've done is um, I've added these event handlers. If the mouse is pressed, if they click, cool. We check if the mouse is inside the box, just like before. If it is, we set dragging to true, and we're done. We ma ma modify. We modified this global state, right? Okay, dragging is true, done. And when they let go of the mouse, no matter what, they lift up. Dragging is false. So if I click down on the object, it's going to keep dragging if true, and the state won't change until I release the uh, dragging gets to false. If I click down, but it's not on the object, dragging is never set to true. So we've used these event modifier, uh, event handlers to modify this global dragging state. Now, in my draw function, what I do is I check this. Hey, are we dragging? Um, if so, let's add the mouse movement to my x, my y. If you haven't seen these p mouse and py, uh, don't, don't worry about them. It's a previous mouse location. So you can get the previous mouse location and the current mouse location, take the difference, and um, add that to your x and y. Um, but don't worry too much about that. You can look at that later. So again, the event handlers manage the state, and then my draw function reacts accordingly. So in, you don't have to think about any of the mouse events in the draw. You just think about this global state. Cool, I'm dragging. I click down. Dragging is true. Draw acts differently as I move the mouse. I let go. So you can drag and drop. This is really neat, right? You can imagine having a whole series of objects here. No big deal. You can do drag and drop. It's really nice. You can rearrange them on the screen. Pretty easy. So we use the event handlers to modify global state, and then the draw function checks the global state to determine how to act. It's pretty neat stuff. So this is called drag manual because we're doing it manually. There's not much of a difference, but I'm going to show you a different way to do it. Um, this is So there's actually an event called mouse drag. It gets fired every time the mouse moves while you're dragging something. And the way that it works is, if you've clicked and then move, if you're moving the mouse while it's clicked down, this event gets fired. And so this will work the same kind of way. My draw stroke function now um, is simple again. We're not managing those states. We have mouse down, we have mouse up, and we have mouse down while the while the mouse key is pressed. So you'll notice that like you'll see a lot of this kind of variety in your event systems where they have these what seem like a really weird function, mouse dragged. But look, it's just um, it's quite nice. There we go. Look at that. It All that it does is it saves you having to put the information in your main loop. Now you might be thinking, do we need this drag variable then? Well, we do, because we still need to do our hit detection, right? We still need to tell it whether it should drag the object or not. If not, um, I can show you what happens. If not, it'll move the object every time I'm dragging, even if I didn't get that hit. So watch this. You know, I can drag, but we, we want to It'll move it every time I'm, I'm dragging, but we don't want that to happen. We only want it to move if I'm dragging, and if it started, here we go. If it started um, on top of that object if, by clicking down there. See, it doesn't move now. How neat is that, right? Drag and drop. So that's basically the examples I wanted to go through. Um, you know this this idea of using events where is it wrong one this idea of using events instead of interrupts to manage um, user input is really simple in the end uh, but I think if you're going to want to use it hi, um, you're going to want to understand that it is an event queue you do subscribe to them in processing you just overload the methods right the functions um, um, and you have to use them to do small things and manage global state. If you follow that pattern, your event handlers are small. They do small things. They change state. They can do some checks and stuff, but you want to keep them small. No drawing, no big stuff. And then have your main program set up like a state machine where, what state am I in, right? If this variable set that I'm here, if that variable set that I'm here, that kind of thing, then you'll, uh, you'll find it's a bit, more, um, a bit more manageable. Great. So we'll leave that there, and we'll come back and continue this unit.